Okay, so the different types of resistance training um, we can look at is uh, a wide variety, right? There's a lot of different ways you can skin a cat when it comes to resistance training. And we're also going to talk about uh, which might be best for you and talk about some intensities and training zones that also uh, could be the best for you. So how hard do you need to work uh, for yourself? Uh, when it comes to the different types of resistance training, we have body weight training. This is something like doing air squats. Uh, maybe somebody's going to do some push ups, uh, maybe pull ups too, right? You're using your body weight as kind of that external force against what you are doing. So, we talked about resistance training previously. You need to be uh, forcing either a body part or stimulus on your body to hopefully elicit a overall training response long term where you recover and get stronger. Body weight's one way you can do that. You can also do it with resistance bands. Um, this is another very cheap way to do it. So those stretchy bands, people, uh, you can see them, you can like place them on the ground, do curls with them and stuff. Those are uh, a form of resistance training because you're applying resistance through that stretchy band that actually makes it tougher, more challenging on your body. In addition to this, free weights, probably one of the most commonly used things aside from machines. This can be something like dumbbells, a barbell, um, a kettlebell, all these different things. They're, they're called free weights because they're free in space. They're not fixed in a, a, a specific motion. Um, for example, I could take a light kettlebell right now and I could throw it across the room. Uh, it's a free weight. It's literally free in space. It's literally just a weight. Uh, honestly, it's a glorified paperweight. That's how you could think of a free weight. Um, but those free weights, we can grab them and have them place load on our body, which of course is going to challenge it to hopefully elicit that stimulus and recover to get stronger. In addition to this, probably one of the most popular things that people do is working the machines. Uh, this is good for targeting specific muscles usually, uh, but also good for beginners. Uh, if you've never worked out before, using some machines can make it a lot easier for yourself. But these are, again, just ways we're providing stimulus uh, to our muscles. Isometric, this is something like a hold um, where you're just pushing and holding against something as hard as you can. This is actually what I did earlier when I was pressing like this. That's an isometric hold. That's still technically resistance, right? That's resistance training. It's providing, I'm providing resistance with one hand against the other, and those two together are almost resisting um, in itself. So isometric holds, a plank would be another good uh, representation of that. In addition to this, we can also use cable machines. This is kind of similar to resistance bands, but uh, the tension is going to be a little different. Um, and then also pneumatic resistance. This is something I played with a little bit, and I I don't know how to describe this, but um, basically you're using uh, the air pressure um, and it's a very weird type of resistance training. Just, just know if you ever get a chance to do pneumatic resistance training, it's very different and please do. Um, so that kind of leads us into this next question about intensity and uh, how hard should you work and how hard are we working? And this is going to look very similar to the discussion on cardio that we talked about earlier in the podcast. And there's going to be varying levels based off of how hard you can do. And you'll probably notice that just like cardio, the higher in intensity you get, the less you can do. Cardio, uh, if I was doing something that was super hard near my 90% of my maximum heart rate, I can only do that for maybe 10 to 30 seconds. But if I'm doing something more endurance based on the lighter side, I can do it much longer. This is the same case when it comes to resistance training, um, but it's based off of your one rep max of certain activities. So we're just going to use squatting, for example. Um, say you squat 200 pounds, that's going to be your one rep max. So if you're trying to develop pure strength, um, as in get stronger at that movement, you're going to do about 85 ish percent of that uh, you could go kind of into 80 but 85 plus is going to help to develop more strength in that uh, your actual strength rep range is going to be one to five repetitions once you hit over five you're leading more into kind of hypertrophy or muscle growth so you're kind of leading less from the strength gains and i will say too these are all on a continuum so you're not going to say you cut off at five reps 
you're not gonna get zero strength gain and only muscle gain, etc. There's a lot of crossover symmetry, but no, if you do want to improve your overall strength, you're gonna need to be lifting heavy and you're gonna need to be lifting heavier in those lower rep ranges. In addition to this, uh, at 50 to 80% of our one rep max, um, say the squat for example, that's gonna be kind of your muscular growth is in hypertrophy. Uh, this is a huge rep range, could be five to 30 repetitions, so uh, it's pretty impossible to mess up, I should say. Uh, you just get something in there, get some good work at that specific level. Um, and this is where I would, you know, I'm not gonna say spend all your training, but if you're trying to get the most bang for your buck, um, spend a lot of it in hypertrophy because it'll help a little bit with strength, a little bit in endurance, a little bit with muscle size. If you're going for overall uh, longevity in life, that's kind of where I would steer you towards. And then uh, 30 plus uh, rep range, it's gonna be more endurance focused. So if I do a, a body weight squat for 30 times or say a barbell squat for 30 times, um, that's gonna be testing my local muscular endurance in my legs, in my glutes, in my hamstrings, all those different areas. So then you're probably asking yourself, which is the best for me? And just like cardio, it's gonna really depend on your goals. If you're somebody who notices that you're really, really weak and you can't do, um, say, get out of a chair very easily, you're going to need to really try to improve your strength. So finding ways to uh, build some volume, um, work that overall just ability to do it um, more than once. You might be somebody who you're like, man, I just love doing air squats for days or I love doing pull-ups for days. You're gonna be doing more of an endurance-based uh, programming. So um, maybe even focusing more on those body weight forms of exercise. It's really gonna depend on what you do. As I mentioned with cardio though, this is a, a, re, a reoccurring theme with exercise. Why not both? You don't have to just do one, why not both? Try to do all of them. That's going to give you the most well-rounded overall uh, health and longevity perspective on it. Uh, but also too, you gotta look at what's your access to equipment, what do you have available, what are you comfortable with, um, and then try your best to work all of those in 